America's top general providing some answers, but not many, detailing a revised timeline of the ambush in Niger that killed four American troops. We owe you more information. More importantly, uh, we owe the families that have fallen more information. October 3rd, 12 members of a U.S. Special Operations Task Force leave the capital of Niger with 30 Nigerian troops. Their goal, a reconnaissance mission in a village about 53 miles north. The assessment by our leaders on the ground at that time was that contact with the enemy was unlikely. But the next day, on their way back to the capital, mid-morning, they came under fire by around 50 local fighters with ties to ISIS, carrying small arms, machine guns, and rocket-propelled grenades. NBC reports U.S. officials are looking into whether the militants were tipped off by someone in the village. The Special Forces team engaged in a firefight for about an hour before requesting help. Within minutes, a U.S. drone was overhead. French jets were scrambled, but took another hour to arrive to the remote location. I don't know that they thought they needed support prior to that time. I don't know how this attack unfolded. I don't know what their initial assessment was of what they were confronted with. The French did not drop bombs. U.S. officials said Friday the pilots had the authority, but could not readily identify enemy forces and did not want to risk hitting U.S. or Nigerian allies. It was evening by the time the French could evacuate the injured and bodies of the dead Americans. But it remains unclear how Sergeant LeDavid Johnson became separated from the group and why it took two days to locate his body about a mile away. Did the mission of U.S. forces change during the operation? Did our forces have adequate intelligence, equipment, and training? Was our pre-mission assessment of the threat in the area accurate? This, as a White House official confirms to CNN that the administration expedited condolence letters to families of fallen soldiers after President Trump made this remark last week. I've written them personal letters. Uh, they've been sent or they're going out tonight, but they were written during the weekend. The following day, the president going a step further, making this false claim. I have called, I believe everybody, but certainly I'll use the word virtually everybody, where during the last nine months something's happened to a soldier. I've called virtually everybody. An email exchange between the White House and the Pentagon, first reported by Roll Call, shows that the president's aides knew these remarks were not true. The aides rushing to learn the identities and contact information from the Defense Department.